India has both Russian and American attack helicopters, but chose to build one more. The reason? Stunning. Having attack helicopters has always been a must in modern warfare. That's been the cornerstone of Western military doctrine for decades. But for the Soviet Union, the priority was different. Massive armored forces were the backbone of their strategy. That is, until the Russia-Ukraine war flipped everything on its head. Suddenly, the world watched 200 drones wiping out $5 million tanks. It became painfully clear. Russia's old doctrine was no longer viable. It had to change. With devastating losses in armored vehicles, attack helicopters became more vital than ever. Today, Russia relies more on its Ka-52s and Mi-28s than on its tanks. So now that we understand just how important attack helicopters have become, imagine this. You're in charge of your nation's security. Here's the big question. If you had to pick the best attack helicopter for your military, which one would you choose? For many, the Russian K-52 is an appealing option, powerful and battle-tested, but it still doesn't come close to the AH-64 Apache. This beast is the most feared attack helicopter in the world with decades of brutal combat experience. Wherever it flies, it becomes the enemy's worst nightmare. But here's the catch. Getting your hands on an Apache isn't easy. The U.S. doesn't sell it to just anyone, thanks to strict export policies. If you're lucky enough to get it, most countries just ask for one thing, more. India is one of the few nations that operates both Russian and American attack helicopters, including the Apache. But here's where things get interesting. Despite having access to these powerful machines, India decided to build its own. Why? Why spend billions developing a new attack helicopter when you already operate some of the best in the world? That's the billion dollar question. And the answer might surprise you. To understand this unusual decision by India's military, you first have to understand how armed forces assess the battlefield environments they might have to operate in. Let me give you a real example. During the US war in Afghanistan, one incident changed everything we thought we knew about helicopters. In the middle of an operation, a CH-47 Chinook was hit by light infantry fire and had to make an emergency landing at high altitude on a mountain. The battle ended, but a big question hit the Pentagon like a missile. How in the hell do we retrieve a helicopter from the top of a mountain? You think it's easy. Just send in the mighty CH-53 Super Stallion. After all, this beast can lift almost anything. There are photos and videos of the CH-53 carrying even fighter jets like the F-15. So what was the problem? Here's where it gets interesting. The CH-53 can lift massive loads, but only at lower altitudes. At higher elevations, the air gets thinner. Thinner air means less lift and less oxygen, which is essential for engines to burn fuel efficiently. In short, at high altitudes, powerful helicopters become weak. So what did the U.S. do? They didn't call the Soviet government. That would have been a PR disaster. Instead, they quietly reached out to a private Russian company that operated the Mi-26, one of the most powerful helicopters ever built. It wasn't designed for high altitudes either, but it had enough raw engine power to overcome efficiency loss and still lift the CH-47 off the mountain. But why am I telling you this? Because guess who is surrounded by some of the highest mountains on Earth? Of course, India. In the 1999 Cargill War, India learned a harsh lesson about close air support in mountainous terrain. The Russian attack helicopters that India relied on, though powerful at low altitudes, became dangerously unstable above the mountains. High altitude air is thinner, and the rugged terrain left little room for error. To everyone's surprise, transport helicopters like the Mi-8 performed better than the Mi-24 gunships. But there was a problem. The Mi-8 was never meant for combat. It could carry unguided rockets, but had no cannon, no guided missiles, and no targeting system like a proper attack helicopter. Years later, when India acquired the fearsome A-64 Apache, expectations were sky high. After all, it's one of the most feared and battle-tested attack helicopters in the world. But in the Himalayas, it struggled badly. So why is India so obsessed with high-altitude warfare? Because the Himalayas act as a massive natural wall. 
If India can dominate that terrain, any ground invasion becomes nearly impossible. While sea routes remain vulnerable, India's growing navy and missile defense systems have made that path equally difficult. That's why India needed a weapon built specifically for brutal warfare in high-altitude conditions. Their answer? The Prachand. But what makes this helicopter so special? And how is it different from anything else in the world? That's what we're about to find out. The Prachand was built for one mission, to dominate the battlefield at high altitude. To understand how crazy that is, you need to know this. Prachand can operate at an altitude of 6,500 meters. That's over 21,000 feet, well above most helicopters' limits. Now, while the Apache can technically fly at 6,000 meters, it struggles to maneuver, carry heavy weapons, or even land safely at that height. The Prachand, it does all of that with ease. Although it's classified as a light attack helicopter, the Prachan can carry up to 16 anti-tank missiles, just like the Apache. It's also coated with materials that reduce its infrared signature, because let's be honest, if a man-pads missile hits you, armor won't save you. Stealth is your best defense. Its advanced sensors and optics give it an incredible edge in battlefield awareness, on par with some of the best attack helicopters in the world. And here's something you probably didn't expect. The Prachand has the most shock-absorbent landing gear I've ever seen. In an emergency landing, the pilot might not even realize they've touched the ground. It's that smooth. Maybe India should market it as a luxury air limo for Gulf billionaires. But make no mistake, this thing was born for war. India didn't just build an attack helicopter. They built a high-altitude Predator capable of landing softly on mountaintops where others can't even fly. Now that you've seen how far India has come, if you think this mission was impressive, land your finger on that like button and fire a missile at the subscribe button to silence the trolls in the comments who say India can't build good weapons. Share this video with someone who believes in homegrown power. And as always, thank you for flying above the Himalayas with us today. This is Caspian Insight, Signing off.